Hello friends. In the morning today, I read an article on Alzheimer's disease. This is a neurological disorder and it manifests itself in the most common form of dementia, that is loss of memory. People are not able to remember things. They forget who they are, they forget day-to-day -day events, to the extent that sometimes they even lose their identity and do not remember as to who they are. And the cells of the body which this disease affects is the neuron or the nerve cell. It's the most amazing cells in the living world because it's the best example to show that the structure of a cell is usually related to the functions that it performs. So in this video I'm talking to you about a neuron or a nerve cell. Let's have a look at the structure. It has a beautiful structure having a cyton and a long tail like thing which I can call it as an axon. And towards the end we can see things that are written over here as nerve endings. This cyton is actually an area where we see the extensions of the cell membrane which are termed as the dendrites. These are basically the protoplasmic extensions of the cell but they are smaller. In fact we are able to see this long protoplasmic extension which has been termed here as the axon and towards the end of this there are nerve endings. These are basically those areas which are usually terminating into muscle so that the signal from a nerve can actually go to a muscle and the response would be manifested in the form of the change in shape in the proteins which are present in the muscle so that some action can be brought about. A very interesting cell, isn't it? Let's have a look at the dendrites. These dendrites you can see are actually meant for uh, processing the signals from different areas and hence they have, they, you, uh, the neurons usually have so many of these dendrites. We can use a term multipolar for such a neuron. Why? because it has several ends from where a number of signals can be taken in. Uh, examples, for example, in a classroom situation, if you are sitting, if you are maybe talking a little to your friend, you are writing, holding on to something, so you are actually responding to a multitude of signals at the same time. And hence you have dend uh, several dendrites on a neuron, so that different signals from the different environmental situations can actually correspond to this so that this can actually take the signal forward through this long protoplasmic process. The axon usually is very thin. It has a thin diameter so that the signals can actually move faster across it to the nerve endings. Here is the nucleus and over the axon we see this blue colored thing is actually called a myelin sheet which is actually secreted by cells that are known as Schoen cells and this is basically an insulated cover something like a copper wire over which we have an insulated cover but the question comes what is the need of this insulated cover well the requirement is that we see here that in case of a copper wire the entire thing forms an insulated cover but over here it is not continuous and there are some gaps in between this insulated cover or the myelin sheet. These are known as the nodes. These are known as the nodes of Ranveer. And actually these nodes are the area where the stimuli in the form of electrical impulses can actually be generated and they can be carried forward so that the action potential or the impulse can actually go forward towards the nerve endings. So actually these nodes help in much faster transmission of impulses. These nodes are really so much important. They help in the ele faster electrical conduction of impulses. So any message, for example, if you touch a hot thing and you suddenly withdraw your hand or you see something or if you hear something, any message would go across this neuron in the form of two things, that, it, that is electrical and chemical signals. So the tip of the dendrite would acquire the signal. The signal would be manifested in the form of electrical signals 
and towards the nerve endings as it progresses it's going to get converted into a chemical signal which would then cross the nerve ending and move on to the next axon and this is how the signals actually get transmitted from one neuron to another today I've talked to you about the basic structure of a neuron we are going to explore much deeper into the transmission of a nerve impulse across the neuron and then in the subsequent videos. Till then, bye-bye.